Hi, during this lecture, we are going to talk about connective tissues, and this is a continuation to the epithelial tissues chapter. So the next class out of the four class of tissues is connective tissues. So before we start on connective tissues, let's quickly recap the four classes of basic tissues in the body. First is epithelial, second is connective tissues, third is muscle tissue, and four is nervous tissue. So this section is going to talk about the different types and categories of connective tissues. Now, connective tissue can either be solid or calcified. Bone is an example of that. It can be semi-solid. Adipose tissue or fat tissue is an example of the semi-solid type of tissue, or connective tissue can be liquid. Blood is an example of a liquid connective tissue. Now what you're seeing here in this image is a generic uh, illustration of what a connective tissue would look like. Now one thing to keep in mind is that connective tissues, just like the name describes, they basically are a filler. They keep everything connected within the body. They are responsible for immune support, with blood being a liquid connective tissue, blood cells, especially the white blood cells, play a role in uh, a person's immune uh, system. They store energy and produce heat, so long-term energy storage and heat production is a um, one of the most important functions of adipose tissue, as well as movement of, and, and transport. So transport of carbon dioxide, transport of oxygen to all the different parts of the body, all of that function of connective tissues. Now, alongside that, connective tissues are also a structural tissue. So connective tissue typically is rich in protein, and it's not as densely packed not all types of connective tissue are as densely packed as epithelial tissues are. So typically in a connective tissue, you see that the cells are widely spread apart. And anything that that substance that is present between the cells is called the ground substance. So what I'm pointing to here, here is a cell, here is a cell, here is a cell. So these are all different types of connective tissue cells, right? And they're sparse, so you don't see cell junctions between these types of cells. Now there's space. The space all over here, this white space, that is filled with a gelatinous fluid in most cases. Sometimes it could be liqui liquefied or this could be calcified as well. So that space between the different types of cells is called the ground substance. And the ground substance is vascular, meaning that it is richly supplied with blood vessels, so it can transport oxygen and carbon dioxide, as well as with nerves and nerve endings. Now when we start to classify connective tissues, we are first going to do a broad classification. So if I were to do a broad classification of all connective tissues, we, we would start off with embryonic versus mature connective tissue. So embryonic connective tissue is anything that is present in the embryo, fetus, um, anything in utero. So all other adult connective tissue or mature, I should say mature, not adult, um, mature connective tissue forms arise from the embryonic connective tissue form. So embryonic is anything in utero. Mature is when the fetus is born. So there are several types of mature connective tissues, but only two types of embryonic connective tissue. So these two types of embryonic connective tissues basically develop or differentiate into several types of mature connective tissues. So we're going to first talk about the embryonic connective tissues. And when we go to mature connective tissues, we're going to talk about First, fibrous connective tissue. So fibrous connective tissue is something that provides elasticity, it provides stretching, contraction, support um, to various internal and visceral organs. So we'll the next we'll thing we're going to talk about is fibrous connective tissues and its different subtypes, followed by cartilage, bone, and 
very little bit about liquid connective tissues. Oops. Now when you look at the different types of cells within connective tissues, they each have a distinct Now in fibrous connective tissues, the cells are called fibroblast. Look at the name fibro and blast. Blast refers to types of cells. Fibro talks, when you think of the term fibro, you're, you're thinking some kind of protein fiber. Now these fibers are basically fibers made of protein to provide strength, elasticity, structural support, um, prevent st unnecessary stretching, that kind of stuff. Now the cells of cartilage are called chondrocytes or chondroblasts. Whenever you look at the term chondro, you're thinking cartilage. So fibrous connective tissue cells are called fibroblasts. Cartilage cells are called chondroblasts or chondrocytes. Now the bone cells are called osteo. Osteo has to do with bone osteocytes and osteoblasts. We're talking about cells of bone tissue. Now the ground substance in bone tissue is calcified. So it's got a solid ground substance. Adipocytes, you'll hear this term a lot when we talk about fat connective tissue. So the, the most important job of adipocytes is to store triglycerides. You know, triglycerides are a type of a lipid, and adipocytes are cells that are storing adipose, which is nothing but your long-term energy storage. It's insulation for various visceral organs, as well as um, energy production. Now, when we come to the liquid connective tissue, we're talking about immune cells. Now, the, the liquid connective tissue is blood. Blood has a lot of cells, right? So we have red blood cells, we have white blood cells, we have blood platelets, we have a lot of different, within white blood cells there are a lot of different types. Now, out of all the cells in blood, the immune cells are the white blood cells. And examples of these immune cells are macrophages. Macrophages are basically cells of phagocytosis. So anytime you have foreign particles, pathogens, uh, worn out um, cell organelles, worn out cells, they're going to be eaten up by macrophages. You have different types of macrophages. When we get into our different systems of the body, we'll talk about the different types of macrophages as well. Now, the next type of cells that are also present in blood are called mast cells. Now, mast cells secrete two... This is just a couple of functions of mast cells. One, they secrete heparin. Now, heparin is a substance that inhibits clotting of blood. So for example, I think everyone's heard of, of something known as deep vein thrombosis. So if you sit in, a, in the same position, so if you're on a long airplane travel, you're sitting in the same position for a long period of time, you are at risk for getting blood clots in your legs, right? So blood has the ability to clot. Now, heparin is a substance that inhibits the clotting of blood. So if someone's at risk for deep... So, so people that are prone to getting blood clots take something called blood thinners. And heparin is a type of blood thinner, meaning that it helps to inhibit or prevent clotting of blood. The second thing that mast cells secrete is histamine. You've heard the term histamine in terms of Antihistamines. Antihistamines are are popularly sold as anti-allergy medications. Benadryl, Claritin, Zyrtec, those are all antihistamines. Now histamine is a substance that dilates your blood vessels. If you think of blood vessels, blood vessels are like a hose. So think of that tube. So whenever the diameter of that tube increases, that is called blood vessel dilation. Whenever the diameter of that tube decreases, that is called constriction. So what histamines do is they dilate 
blood vessels. So whatever your reactions are, are stronger. So, so more mucus is secreted when your mucus cells are getting more blood supply. Now, we talked about the cells as connected. Next, let's talk about the different fibers. I, I talked about how when you think of fibers, you're thinking of some kind of a protein wire-like substance, a fiber. Now, the most abundant protein in the body is collagen. Now, collagen is also the most abundant protein on Earth. It is very tough. It is stretch resistant, so you don't want your skin being stretched indefinitely, right? So at some point, you want your, your stretching inhibited. It's flexible, it is strong, and it's found in a lot of parts of our body, such as the tendons, ligaments. Ligaments are what connect bone to bone. Tendon is what connects bone to muscle, as well as the deeper layers of our skin. Our skin is very rich in collagen. Now, that is what gives our skin a certain amount of toutness. Now, as people age, they produce less and less collagen. So, it manifests on your skin as wrinkles. So, when you look at a lot of anti-aging products that are advertised in the market, one of the ingredients in that will be collagen, or, or it's popularly advertised as a collagen-boosting, collagen-containing product. The second type of fiber we're going to talk about is a reticular fiber. Now these are also types of collagen fibers, but they are coated with a glycoprotein. I think by this point everybody knows what a glycoprotein is. A glycoprotein is a combination between a carbohydrate and a protein. Now these are very uh, commonly seen in parts of the body that have to filter stuff. So think about it. Your, your ly lymphatic system is kind of a drain-off system. So whatever junk that is formed via exocytosis or your immune system, your immune system has battled an infection, killed off the pathogen, all of that junk is going to go into the lymphatic system. And it is going to get filtered through your lymph nodes and eventually the spleen, which is nothing but a very giant lymph node. So it, it works as a sieve. So these reticular fibers are rich in structures of the body that work as sieves to uh, filter junk. Now the third type of fibers that are also common are elastic fibers. They're very thin fibers. They're, they're pin-like. So think of collagens as wavy, wavy ribbons. Then you have reticular fibers, which are kind of hollow and kind of medium thickness and elastic fibers are your thinner pin-like fibers. So over here you're going to see in this image you're looking at macrophages, you're looking at fibroblasts. The elastic fibers are here in the purple. Uh, the blue fibers I believe are the collagen fibers here. Yep. So elastic fibers are found in parts of the body that have to stretch. So naturally, they're going to be found on skin, because skin has to stretch. Your visceral organs that have to stretch and contract as well. So examples of that, your lungs. Your lungs expand when you breathe in, contract when you breathe out. Your urinary bladder, the uterus. So elastic fibers are present in parts of the body that have to stretch and contract. So, to recap, we've talked about what connective tissues are, we've talked about what a generic connective tissue has. So, cells that are wide apart, space between is filled with ground substance, we've talked about the different cells of different connective tissues, and we've talked about the fibers that are seen in connective tissues. Now, in classification, we talked about how we can broadly classify them as in utero and out of utero, so embryonic versus mature. So let's start off looking at embryonic connective tissue. So there are two types of embryonic connective tissue, and one of these types gives rise to all other mature connective tissue, and that one is called mesenchyme. Now, mesenchyme is a connective tissue which differentiates into several other mature connective tissue types. 
So what you're seeing here in this image to the left, now take a look at this. This is a light micrograph. Total magnification is 300 times. Let me change this to a pen here. Now what you're seeing here, here is a cell. Here is a cell. This is a fibrous connective tissue. So you're, you're seeing fibroblasts over here. You're seeing these, this kind of back pink shaded region is all your ground substance. And then you have the different fibers. You're seeing wavy fibers. So the fibers that you're seeing here are collagen fibers and reticular fibers as well. So get used to looking at a lot of light micrographs and um, just get used to identifying the different types of fibers within the different types of connective tissue cells. So mesenchyme is a embryonic connective tissue that has fibroblasts, it has ground substance, um, it has a... Now the cell of mesenchyme can also be called a mesenchymal cell instead of a fibroblast. If it, when it morphs into a fibrous connective tissue, that is when it would be called a fibroblast. But you can see the different types of fiber, fibers in here as well. Now the next connective tissue type is Wharton's jelly, also known as mucus connective tissue. You've commonly probably heard it as a Wharton's jelly. Now Wharton's jelly or mucus connective tissue is, is a, a very gooey substance. It's very gelatinous and it's present within the umbilical cord. It, it, it is not vascularized, it does not have nerve endings, so, so you don't feel pain. Neither, neither the mother nor the baby feels pain when the umbilical cord is cut. And, and this mucus connective tissue is a rich source of stem cells. Now because the umbilical cord cells are a rich source of stem cells, a lot of uh, pe people have now started harvesting them and storing them um, in case they're needed in the future for, for therapeutic use. Now moving on to mature connective tissues. The first one we're going to look at, first we're going to look at all the fibrous connective tissues, then we're going to look at cartilage, and then we're, we're going to look at the other types of connective tissues. So within fibrous connective tissues, you have two types of subcategories. You have the loose and the dense. So first, let's look at loose connective tissues. So the first type of loose connective tissue, also the most commonly found, is areolar connective tissue. One of the places where you find the most areolar connective tissue is within the dermis of your skin. So the dermis is a second layer. Your skin is made up of three layers. So the outside or the outermost, the most superficial layer is the epidermis, the middle layer is the dermis, and the bottommost layer is the epidermis. So areolar connective tissue is found just beneath or underneath your epidermis. Now, it is very loosely packed, as you can see. So take a look at this light micrograph right here. You can see a lot of fibroblasts. This is a fibrous connective tissue, so the cells of this are called fibroblasts. You can see a lot of fibroblasts here. You can see the ground substance, which is the light pink shading in the background. And what you can see clearly here is the different types of fibers that are kind of dispersed within the ground substance. Now take a look at this one right here. I'm going to shade right over it. Whoops. This fiber, it's a ribbon-like wavy fiber. That is called the collagen fiber, so it's wavy. So it, it, it's providing that toutness, that uh, strength to this type of connective tissue. Now the next one you see is a reticular fiber. It's right over here. Now the reticular fiber, remember, it is a type of a collagen fiber that is 
kind of coated with a glycoprotein. So they kind of look wavy. They're not as thick as a regular collagen fiber, but they kind of look hollow. And the third type of fiber is an elastic fiber. They look pin-like or elastic. Now, the most... I've talked about how the dermis is a common place for areolar connective tissue, but this is the most abundant type of connective tissue. So you see this in your muscular tissues, you see this surrounding your nervous tissues and your blood vessels. This type of tissue is everywhere. The next connective tissue type within the loose category is adipose tissue. Any cell of adipose tissue is called an adipocyte. Now here's a nice looking light micrograph. You see that the cells are fairly tightly packed here. Um, and, and they look that way because the cells have become plump from storing adipose or triglycerides or lipids. So this white stuff that you see there, that is all the lipid that's been stored inside the adipocyte. As a result of that, the adipocyte has become plump. Now, in human beings, we typically have uh, different types of fat. In hibernating animals or infants that sleep for a long time, that can go for a long time without uh, eating, there's something known as brown fat. Now, women have more adipose tissue than men, and the amount of adipose tissue or, or um, triglycerides a human being has uh, also ha plays a role in their fertility. So, so female hormones and male hormones, they're all lipid-based substances. So the amount of lipid you have in your system kind of plays a role in the fertility as well. So if women have less than a certain uh, percentage of body fat, then they do not secrete estrogen and do not have their period. The next tissue type, also a loose type of connective tissue, is reticular connective tissue. Now, as the name suggests, you can tell that it is going to be very, very rich in reticular fibers. We talked about how reticular fibers are a type of, connect, a a type of uh, fiber that are collagen coated with the glycoproteins, and, and they're present in parts of the body that filter junk. So they're mostly present in your lymphatic system. Here's a light micrograph of the spleen cells, and you can see the amount of reticular fibers in this light micrograph. Now, uh, oh, it's not from the spleen, I'm sorry, it's from the lymph node. The spleen is nothing but a la large lymph node. So they're going to filter a lymph, and whatever junk is present in there, they're going to catch that and get rid of it. Now moving on to the dense category. So we looked at the loose category, now we're going to look at the dense category. The first type of dense connective tissue is called, remember, these are also fibrous and hence these, the cells of these types of tissues are also called fibroblasts. Now the first one is dense irregular connective tissue. Look at the term dense and irregular. So what this tells you is that it is densely packed with protein but it is not regularly packed. So it's a random assortment of protein fibers. Now you can rarely see visible, visible fibroblasts in you. You have to really look for them. So you, in this light micrograph to the left right here, you can't easily make out a fibroblast, but in the illustration you can because it's so densely packed. You can see all the collagen but it is not arranged in a regular fashion. It's called, kind of randomly put together. Hence, this is called dense irregular connective tissue. Now, I was talking about the dermis earlier and how the upper part of the dermis, right underneath your epidermis, was areolar connective tissue. Now, the deeper you go inside the skin, the, the areolar connective tissue changes and now it becomes dense, irregular connective tissue. Now, when skin is stretched, and it's stretched beyond what it normally does, and it, you don't have enough time for the skin cells to grow, you get something known as stretch marks. 
are striae. Now that happens when these collagen fibers are stretched and the elastic fibers are stretched to the point where skin cannot come back to its normal position. So that is why you have those line-like appearances when someone gets stretch marks. The next type of connective tissue of the dense category, of the dense fibrous category, is the dense regular connective tissue. So what it means is also densely packed with protein. Secondly, it is all this protein is present in a regular stat or stacked fashion. So take a look at this micrograph. You can see all these collagen fibers, one collagen fiber, two collagen fiber, all of these collagen fibers that are neatly stacked, and you can even see the nuclei of the fibroblasts dispersed every once in a while. What you can see here very clearly is the ground substance. So you can barely see a little bit of the ground substance right here. Now the places where you are most likely to see dense regular connective tissues are in bones and ligaments. So these are structures that hold muscle to bone and bone to bone. So a ligament is something that holds bone to bone and tendon is something that holds bone to muscle. The next type of mature dense connective tissue is elastic connective tissue. Now it is, it also has a lot of fibroblasts, so it's a fibrous type of connective tissue, and it is richly packed with elastic fibers. So instead of collagen fibers, it's richly and densely packed with elastic fibers. And this is seen in parts of the body that undergo rapid stretching and contracting and that cannot afford to get fatigued. So for example, the trachea. The trachea is your windpipe. So when you breathe in, the trachea has to stretch. When you breathe out, the trachea contracts. The arteries and the lungs around the heart, that is where you see a lot of elastic connective tissue. So I'm going to recap here before we start on the cartilage part that what we just did are the fibrous connective tissues. In the fibrous connective tissues, we had the loose fibrous connective tissue and the dense fibrous connective tissue. In the loose fibrous tissue category, we saw the areolar tissue, we saw the adipose tissue, and we saw reticular type of tissue. Um, in the dense regular, in, in the dense category, we saw dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic connective tissue. Now all of these, the fibrous connective tissue, were types of mature connective tissue. In the embryonic variety, we saw mesenchyme, which differentiates into all other mature connective tissue types. And we saw Wharton's jelly, aka mucous connective tissue, which is a rich supply of stem cells. So now we're going to talk about cartilage. Now cartilage is a supportive connective tissue. So more than stretching and contracting, think about shock absorption. So you saw fibrous was more about stretching, contracting, elasticity, plasticity. Cartilage is more about shock absorption and providing that structural support. Now the cells of cartilage are called chondrocytes. Now chondrocytes are surrounded by matrix or ground substance. Ground sub substance is also called matrix. Now the cells that secrete the matrix are called chondro. So anything that's chondro is made up of cartilage. Now this type of connective tissue is very poorly vascularized and hence when you tear cartilage it heals very very slowly. It doesn't bleed as much because there's no blood vessels but it also heals very slowly as a result of not being vascularized. And there are three types of cartilage, and we're going to go over each and every one of those. So we have highline cartilage, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage. So let's talk about highline cartilage first. Now, highline cartilage is very rubbery, and the fetal skeleton, so when mesenchyme starts to differentiate, and the fetal skeleton starts to form. 
it first, the, the, this fetal skeleton is first made up of hyaline cartilage. It's rubbery and can easily bend. It's the most abundant type of cartilage in the body. And it's found on the ends of bones. So our bones, each bone in our body is joined to some other kind of bone. And you have the hyaline cartilage kind of be there as a shock absorbent between the different joints. Now where your ribs attach to your chest plate or the sternum, you have quite a bit of hyaline cartilage there as well. Now take a look at this light micrograph, magnified 400 times its original size. So what you can see here in the background shading is the ground substance or the matrix. You can see the chondrocyte. And the interesting thing about these is that these chondrocytes are present in little small, small little air pockets. And those air pockets are called lacuna or lacunae. So a lacuna is an air pocket within the ground substance that contains the chondrocyte. Now your nose tip is made up of hyaline cartilage. So if you palpate, palpate means touch. So if you palpate your nose tip, you can feel that it's it's rubbery in nature and that is all hyaline cartilage. The next cartilage, a tougher type of cartilage is called fibrocartilage. Now look at the term fibro and cartilage. The term fibro tells you that there's some kind of protein fibers that are coming into the picture here. A tough protein. Now fibrocartilage is a cartilage wherein the ground substance is traversed by a lot of Ooh. collagen fibers. As a result of that collagen fibers, this type of cartilage resists compression, so you don't want your bones grinding against each other. You want your bones to absorb some shock. So think about jumping up and down. When you jump up and down, your ankle joints and your knee joints have to absorb that shock, of that movement. And that is done by a pad or a padding that is made up of fibrocartilage between these joints. Now this stuff shaded in blue, you can clearly see in this light micrograph, ground substance, you have the chondrocyte right here, you see the air pocket, which is the lacuna, and you see these wavy collagen fibers right here as well. So this type of cartilage is found within your intervertebral discs. So think about it. When you bend forward, you, some people can bend backward. You, you Between your knees, the pubic symphysis, all of those are made up of fibrocartilage. The next type of cartilage, the most flexible type of cartilage, is elastic cartilage. The term elastic says it all, and they are rich with elastic fibers. Now they're found in your external ear. So if you palpate your earlobe, it, it, it can be bent, it can be twisted, and that is because it is made up of these elastic cartilage. So you can clearly see here, a 400 times magnified light micrograph, you can see the air pocket, you can see the chondrocyte, you can see the ground substance, and right here you, you can see clearly those thin wire-like fibers called the elastic fibers. So the next type of connective tissue is a calcified mature adult connective tissue. And this is because the ground substance here is calcified and mineralized. And that's bone. So our skeletal system, we'll talk more about the histology of bone when we go to our bones unit. But um, it is type of a connective tissue uh, and the cells remember what the cells of bone are called they're called osteocytes so you have the osteocyte right here this blue thing is the osteocyte you can see that it's present in the air pocket which is called lacuna here is the ground substance or the extracellular matrix which is hard and therefore not flexible at all now you can see here that this osteocyte has little branches. These little branches that are splitting off and they are going to go connect other types of osteocytes. Now these little canals 
these little holes in the ground substance that can basically make one osteocyte connect to another osteocyte are called canaliculi. So there are little canals in that calcified ground substance that are helping one osteocyte connect to another osteocyte. We'll talk more about the histology in the bones unit. Now in terms of liquid connective tissue, this will also be studied later in much more detail when you go to um, ANP2. But when you get to the liquid connective tissue, you're talking blood and lymph. So within blood, you have the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. In lymph, you do not have the red blood cells. You only have the white blood cells. So what you're seeing here is a light micrograph of blood. And you see that the non-nucleated cells with the lighter centers, the donut-shaped cells, are the red blood cells or the erythrocytes. You have the little fragments of cells right here. You can see the blood platelets. And you can also see a couple of white blood cells. So the white blood cells are the cells of the immune system. Now the ground substance is very aqueous or water-like in blood. And that is called blood plasma. Now the blood plasma still has dissolved gases, it still has clotting factors, stuff that you can't see on a light micrograph. You take blood plasma and you remove all of the clotting factors from it. And then you get something known as blood serum. So we'll talk more about blood when we go to ANP2. Now moving on to the last two types of tissues, the nervous tissues and muscle tissues. I'm going to talk about it very little right now because we have two separate units for these types of tissues. Now in muscle tissue, we need to make sure why muscle tissue is unique. One, it is unique because it has the ability to be electrically excited. So it can stretch and contract and relax on its own. So it, it's excitable. Now there's three types of muscle tissues one, skeletal muscle tissue, so anything that's covering your bones. Now, skeletal muscle tissue is also voluntary muscle, anything that you can move at will. So if you're, if you're trying to show off your biceps, you're, you're willingly or voluntarily flexing a certain muscle in your arm. That is because it is a skeletal muscle and it is a voluntary muscle. We'll talk more about the histology of these when we get to the muscles unit. The other two types of muscles, the cardiac muscle and the smooth muscle, are not voluntary, meaning that you cannot contract or relax these muscles at will. Cardiac muscle is unique in that it is extremely fatigue resistant. Smooth muscle is also involuntary, and our digestive system, the uterus, the intestines, all of that is made up of smooth muscle. You cannot control these muscles at will. Now, a lot of functions of the muscular tissues. One, you would not be able to move your skeletal system if it wasn't for muscles. Two, with the cardiac muscles, oxygen wouldn't reach all parts of your body and carbon dioxide would not be eliminated out of your body if it wasn't for cardiac muscle. And with smooth muscles, digestion movement of digested food through the digestive system is an important example of smooth muscle function. In addition to all of these, they're also a source of body heat because when you contract and relax, think shivering, you're producing body heat. So here are light micrographs of all three types of muscle. Let's take a look at Top left, you have mu you have your skeletal muscle. Now you can see these lines right here. Take a look at these lines. Now those are called striae. Now striae refer to lines. Now this muscle looks lined in appearance, and hence it is called a striated muscle tissue. Here is smooth muscle, and here is cardiac muscle. 
So cardiac muscle is also striated, but unlike your skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle is involuntary, meaning that you cannot will how fast or how slow your heart is beating, nor can you will for your heart to start and stop. The last type of tissue is nervous tissue. And nervous tissue is the most unique of all tissue types because one, it can conduct electricity. Two, it can generate electricity. But by electricity, I mean electrical potential. We'll talk about what exactly action potential is, what electrical signal in this case means. So nervous tissue is kind of something that generates and conducts uh, action potentials. The, the cells of nervous tissue are called neurons, right here, and it kind of uh, roughly looks like a star. So the, the, they're called stellate in appearance because they kind of look like a star. Now in our body, our brain, the spinal cord, and all of the nerves are made up of nervous tissue. So when we get to our nervous tissue unit, which is the last unit in ANP1, we'll be talking more 